So Aqua and Ruby are off to YouTube High School, which, you know, the way that I wrote YouTube kind of looks like YouTube. So I was just like, I mean, I guess we, we do have the whole talk of like social influencers or influencers on the internet and all that. <laughs> internet personalities. There you go. Influencers. But we got to meet Kana again, who uh, we haven't seen since uh, they were kids. And Kana was uh, very excited to see Aqua again because she thought that he had quit acting all this time. To which, I mean, he 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 kind of is in his current state, but you know, I th he'll probably he'll eventually get back to the whole acting stuff. I also accidentally read like the first line of the high dive summary, so I kind of have an idea <laughs> of what's going on. Anyways, they said a whole bunch of stuff in the previous episode. If you haven't watched that or episode one, I recommend you do. And uh, if you like the content, remember to leave a like on the video and subscribe, subscribe if you haven't. Yeah. And if you didn't like the content, dislike the video and we'll be on our way. Let's get started. So Aqua's getting into the strawberry production, so which means they're still, they still need to recruit like other people for like the idol stuff. Oh, thanks for the recap. <laughs> Lolly-senpai. <laughs> Damn, just following him, huh? Damn, asking where he's living? <laughs> Yeah, for nefarious means. Ooh. I don't think he's the sort of guy who wants to- <laughs> Damn! <laughs> oh, took her to the director. <laughs> the trauma. Still in the, still in the industry. <laughs> That's right, child. Eat. <laughs> he gave that to his, to her son. Hell yeah. Holy shit! Look at these people. Fucking. Man, she's out here eating Uber Eats Relatable. Yeah, but you're wasting it all on fucking things that you shouldn't be wasting on, you know? <laughs> She's not taking no for an answer. It's gonna whittle you down at this point. Oh? Oh, it's a person he's investigating? Sixter. Wow. Then one's like a even more. Why nobody's found out about you guys. Well, as long as it doesn't lock you out permanently, yeah. So that's what it was showing in the in the in the opening. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's it. Okay. Jesus Christ. So he's got a fucking list right now. Double seven. You mean he's a trap? <laughs> That's the trigger. <laughs> Hell yeah. Let's do this. <laughs> What's happening? An extremely fine actor like yourself. So that's the guy he's looking for. I'm <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, he's got a revenge plot to deal with. He's thinking about that, and his, the star in his eyes is black. <laughs> One star. <laughs> oh, you. A villain in the final episode. Is this kind I was thinking, I'm like, is this- <sighs> What the fuck is this guy's voice? <laughs> what the fuck is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this is episode one? What a, what is ha- <laughs> He has to go into the source material. <laughs> Jesus Christ, 14 volumes into half a TV season? <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> That's why that's a one fucking star. Oh. I like that he relayed the message. Mm. Oops. <laughs> a ham actor. <laughs> of course, understandable. Mm. Oh, she learned that. <laughs> At some point. <laughs> oh, they use a lot of effects for Kana. Yes, come work with me on this final episode. <laughs> it's a show where everything else sucks, but wow, the, uh, the ending's pretty good. <laughs> this guy's voice, I just can't. <laughs> 
Yeah, whatever, bro. You just gotta be here for one fucking day. Oh, he's playing the stalker? <laughs> hey, yo, he's... Wow. The disrespect, bro. He's out here just fucking twiddling. Is his name is Melt? Oh, is that the producer? So anyway, sir, <laughs> you've got a brush that you've been using? <laughs> Man really came up just to- Alright, time to come and caress this man. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like I said, you've got a- <laughs> You've got first-hand experience. <laughs> Why are you- uh, 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 Alright, what is this setting that you guys are in, like, this fucking warehouse, anyways? Oh, my hair is getting all frizzy. Oh. <laughs> I don't exhibit any charms, either. あくまで年齢と中身の雑誌が引き起こした異質感。うん。Well, that's the whole point of acting, isn't it? To throw your fucking pride away. Hmm, makes it feel like you're not. Hmm. Oh, magazine, shoot. Oh, this man's. Of course. Fucking package. Yeah, I was like, when she says, like, oh, I finally got, I'm being able to, like, recognize for my acting skills. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Oh, we're gonna pick up his cigarette? Yeah, it's... I was thinking, I'm just like, I, I don't think that's it. <laughs> He's just being taken advantage of. Is he just gonna pick up all the cigarettes? Like, which one did he <laughs> Oh, he just picked up a few. Oh, he might as well give Kana what she wants. Hell yeah, dude. Well, I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna go write my notes and we will be right back to the center. Let's see. I'm going sweet today. A girl who can only consume canned food and supplements. She has shut her heart to the world and harbors a sad past. One day, she meets a handsome yet slightly mean-spirited boy, because of course she does, who transfers to her school. The two quickly become close, and the flavor of their love is... The live adaptation of the hit manga from Yoriko Kichi Kichijoji, 
that caused readers throughout Japan to shed sweat tears is finally here, featuring the next generation of handsome young stars. A very sweet love story is about to unfold. One star. <laughs> Oh, dude. All right, so that was episode three of Oshinoko. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below. You know that I always like talking to you guys. For me, I thought that this was a pretty nice episode. It was a kind of filled episode, which was just fantastic and of course as with the, uh, the the topic of this anime and how it's talking about the uh the underbelly of the uh, of this sort of the entertainment industry and everything right so we're getting to see kana's piece which is the uh struggle of being a child actor who has grown up consider how cutthroat the entertainment industry can be you know, it's a lot of a lot of the times the kids, the child actors who are in these sort of things, you know, they very much get taken advantage of. Whether they get taken advantage of by the producers, by the 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 the, the TV crew, or even by their parents, you know, who would essentially, if they if they become a successful child actor, then like the parents might just end up taking all their money and all that. So. It's, uh, it's very nice to see Kana's place and like her struggle as she says that she's got a, a rough patch that, what is it, she, she, she's, she's been, <laughs> she's, she's had a, a rough patch for a while, you know, and as, as she was talking to Aqua, she uh, explains about how uh, how she used to be as a kid, you know, we saw how she was, where she didn't really treat people like they were humans, you know, she didn't really treat them like they existed. And so, as she said, due to this, she ends up, what is it, her work, her, her opportunity for work ended up drying up because she grew up and, you know, when, when you grow up uh, as a child, you're not exactly cute anymore. You lost that cute factor and people don't give a single shit about you anymore. So she had to grow up and she had to change. And so she now becomes this person who is easy to work with. You know, it seems like she gives a lot of uh, people a lot of flattering as uh, Kaburagi would say, but it does look like she's overcompensating. You know, because uh, again, with her as a child and how she acted like she's the she's the best thing ever, and you know, people, everybody else is down below her, and now here she is feeling like perhaps she is uh, doing the opposite, where instead of being high and mighty, she's down below, kissing people's feet, flattering people, and all that. So, it, you know, in terms of that, it really does feel like she's she's overcompensating, and. Uh, despite her going through that rough patch that she said that she was going through and, you know, people on the internet being like, Oh, is, is this girl still acting around? You know, or one of the fucking internet comment that said she was cuter when she was younger, which is just sus, but... <laughs> But it's interesting that instead of thinking about thinking about how the, the entertainment industry is, right? And how uh, with Aqua, you know, he understands how cutthroat this industry is and how uh, very much if you don't, uh, essentially if you don't stand up for yourself, and, but if you do stand up for yourself, y you kind of lose opportunities too as well. But, you know, if you're being someone like Kana who's being a uh, an easy to work with sort of person she ends up getting taken advantage of by kaburagi who uh as his uh his talk with this other guy i i don't know why he decided to talk about it you know he's just having a smoke break but as the man says she's uh easy to work with nice to have around which kind of goes back to that whole piece of kind of saying that Kaburagi is the, he's, he's the looks first kind of man, you know, he takes the, uh, what is it, he thinks of appearance first, you know, the whole acting stuff, it's whatever, it's whether, whether you're actually physically appealing or not to him, I would assume, and it, it just, it's, it's just kind of like, ugh, <laughs> I mean, if we're going to be talking about, you know, the underbelly of this sort of industry, and, 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 and they're, they're giving us this whole thing of, again, Kaburagi's a looks first kind of man. And how when, what is it, when Kana was calling him up to get Aqua the role, and he looked at Aqua, also, he actually, <laughs> hold on. So when Kana called him, well, I mean, the first thing that he saw was, uh, of course, the picture of Aqua. And he goes and says, 
he's got a handsome face, which is the reason why he decided to uh, hire him. But also he ends up saying, if an extremely fine actor like yourself recommends him so strongly, that's so so strongly, then sure, call him up. And I'm just kind of like, oh, like the way that he says it just gives me a little. It's like a, it's like a fucking snake. That's the only thing I can describe right now. <laughs> Slimy. There you go. That that's what it is. Other than that very sussy feeling that uh, I'm getting from this man, uh, he goes and he talks about how, like, Kana, her name still has some sort of notoriety, you know, people still kind of remember her. Uh, and so when she left her, left her, whatever, the, the thing that she was in, her agency or whatever, and she went freelancing, her cost is dirt cheap, and of course she's easy to work with, and that she's willing and, and able to just do whatever random acting role that he throws at her. But he doesn't like that she takes acting seriously, you know? He's just like, she she needs to understand, <laughs> which I guess kind of goes back to the whole, the whole communication thing. <laughs> Kana needs to understand the the communication between the the what the producers want and all that, right? And so it seems like she still kind of doesn't get that. As Kaburaki again is a little, it, it, it's not upset, but he's just a little like, oh, I wish, you know, she she didn't have to fucking take it. She did. She, I wish she wasn't so fucking picky about this whole acting shit, right? You know, this this whole show stuff. It's just a promotional piece for the fucking models. So like, who gives a shit if the acting is bad, as long as it's promoting these models. To which, I guess we're really up to this point where I guess all publicity is good publicity. <laughs> you know, who cares if they fucking act like shit as long as they're hot, am I right? <laughs> which again, I, I'm going back to that whole feeling of like, oh my god, like, uh, I, th that's the one thing that I'm a little afraid of, is that if they're going to get to that point where, you know, especially for, for, for female actors who want to get, uh, up there, uh, you know, in, in places like Hollywood and all that, and, 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 you know, with the whole, uh, that, that whole, like, Me Too movement and all that, like, that's all I'm thinking about, I'm just like, oh, <laughs> but hey. If they want to fucking, if that is something that they do want to talk about in this series, I'm totally fine with. But of course, if it happens, I will be uh, standing six feet away. <laughs> Anyways, I went on a rant about Kaburagi, but I think my original point was that it's interesting that Kana is still feeling pretty optimistic about this whole thing. Uh, the fact that she has gone through her rough patches, which I suppose is in line with her overcompensating. And, <laughs> you know, with her overcompensating and then having somebody like Kaburagi fucking hamming her up as she likes to talk about ham a lot. <laughs> Man's really out here hamming her up again with the whole like extremely fine actor like yourself. It's so, and how she says, like, oh, I have a long relationship with uh, Kaburagi because, you know, he's, he's the one guy who's keeping me around. So I think I'm doing something good. But in reality, you know, again, with what I've said about Kaburagi, he's just taking advantage of her. And as Aqua, as Aqua thought when he was overhearing this, this is just how this industry is. But despite the industry taking advantage of Kana, Kana is happy to know that Aqua is still in the industry, even if he's not really acting as much, you know, even if he's only working behind the scene and everything. Uh, as she says, she's just happy to know that there is someone who's kind of like struggling along the way with her. Uh, knowing that she, knowing that she's not alone in this feeling is very comforting, which is very understandable, you know, just knowing that you're not alone in this situation and that somebody is out there who is going through the same thing that you are, you know, it makes you feel, again, that you're not the only person who's who's dealing with this stuff. The final thing for Kana, before I move on to someone else, unless I can to another rant about Kaburagi, is the fact that she lives by herself in a dorm and that her family lives in the countryside. And so because of that, she doesn't really cook, so she orders Uber a lot, or she, I assume she orders Uber Eats because Uber is just the fucking, anyways. <laughs> The fact that she goes and she says, hey, I still have all the money that I've saved up from being a child actor, which, had, it, look, Uber Eats is very expensive, all right? Take it from me, who had spent like a year or two of just ordering DoorDash. It takes a lot of fucking money. 
<laughs> and I'll be uh, and, and quitting DoorDash is like the best thing ever because again, it's ridiculously expensive and it's it's just not good overall. And if you want to, especially if you want to save money, especially if you're now fucking working for dirt cheap compared to how you were as a child, you know, and, and if you're living in a dorm, I assume you're paying rent, right? Actually, do you pay rent for dorms? I, I can't, I don't know. I've never lived in a school dorm or uh, I assume it's a school dorm because she's saying it's a dormitory. Anyways, yeah, I just, uh, hopefully Kana just learns to fucking cook by herself because that or, you know, you can always just order. <laughs> Wait, no, this is Japan. It's different. Right, I was gonna- I was gonna say something, but no. But yeah, you know, hopefully she, uh, she get out of that ruckus. So she's probably- out, if she's- if she's ordering Uber Eats almost every day, that's like, uh, uh that's like over a thousand dollars in a year. And that's- that's- I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's over a thousand dollars in a year. <laughs> I- I would know, again, because- I, it, I, I've i had that problem before and it, it's really bad. If there's one thing I don't want Kana to do is to deplete her entire funds and then get extremely desperate for things that I don't want her to do. <laughs> but we'll just have to see it when we see it. So, uh, going over to Aqua, who he's still in the sphere of, you know, revenge and all that. And uh, with the way that uh, when Ruby found out that Hold on. When Ruby found out that he's going to be in a TV drama, because of course, uh, Miyako ended up telling her about it. She goes and she says, well, mom did say that one day, maybe I'd be an idol and you'd be an actor. And so she, she reminisces about that and she's quite happy to know that he's continuing with this whole spiel, right? With her saying, I see you haven't forgotten. We've got Aqua who's just like, the fuck you talking about? I'm not doing this for uh, for because I wants me to become an actor. You know, he just wants to get close to the to the fucking producer. What is it? He can enact his revenge if it was. You know, fulfilling I's wish, yearning to be an actor. I have no such lofty ambitions, which again kind of goes back to his feeling of his lack of confidence as he was talking to. Kana during the whole gig stuff, which also is just him, I was gonna say, humbling himself, downing it, you know, with uh, Kana saying, hey, your acting is just fine. What's with this, I prefer to work behind the scenes stuff. And he says, this is a role anyone could do as long as they practice, which it's kind of like, I mean, if you put that for just about everything, well, yeah, you know, anybody could draw if they practice, anybody could write if they practice, but sometimes there are just people who are unable to do this stuff. And uh, don't tell my friend that because <laughs> unfortunately his motto is if I can, you can too. And I'm just over like, I don't know. <laughs> can you really? <laughs> I'm very opposite of it. But uh, again, he, he's downing himself by saying I'm not so lousy that I hinder others, but I don't exhibit any charm either. And I kind of feel like it, it's almost a, a, a feeling... <laughs> What is it? A, a, a feeling of him having a problem as like an a, as a child actor, right? Because the next thing that he goes and says, or he thinks anyways, you know, my acting that Kana witnessed that day only felt so alien due to the disparity between my physical age and inner mind. But now that he's grown up, you know, as my body is caught up to my mental age, I'm just a dime a dozen actor. So he's just like, I'm not a special person. To which... I mean, m m we, we kind of have seen him showcase his acting skill in like the last episode, you know, <laughs> which is what I was saying during the reaction. Like, yeah, he's acting, but for nefarious means. <laughs> but when he heard the name of the producer, it reminded him that this producer, uh, Kaburagi, is on the list of suspects. You know, because I have three phones, which damn, dude. Uh, he, he's just like, well, even though I seem ditzy, she really made a lot of compromises in order to keep their secret, which is understandable because, you know, people still don't even know that she had kids. In, in the scene with the phone and how he says the, the screen locks every 30 seconds when he enters a, 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 the passcode wrong. And so it would take him like half a day to get 100 passcodes. And then he went to a, a, a whole month, he had he went through a thousand passcodes and like for four years, he went at it. You know, we can see that this is his determination. This is the only thing, this ire that is inside his heart is the only thing that's keeping him 
uh, 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 late, uh, up late at night, you know, with him spending four years just putting in passcodes until he finally gets the right one. Which, uh, again, I will say, it's a good thing that this is an older model that only locks you out for 30 seconds instead of, you know, you only get this much amount of, you only get this amount of time to try to passcode before the phone just completely locks you out and you have to go through like some emergency shit, you know? <laughs> And so I go back to the point that I made in the previous episode. Again, if you haven't seen my discussion in the previous episode, you should. With that in mind, right? And with the way that perhaps he's kind of in the same place as his mom. And with Kana, again, trying to pull him into the whole acting, uh, the whole acting stuff again. It makes me wonder if that, that is what's going to happen because he says that the only reason why he came here is because he wants to get Kaburagi's uh, DNA to which, you know, he keeps saying that like, I need to grab their hair strands, which is why I'm just thinking of these stupid ideas of how he could grab their, their, their a strand of their hair. But towards the end, right, with him over listening, over listening, overhearing. Uh, the producer talking shit on Kana and he goes in and he takes uh, he takes the man's cigarette. I was just like, oh, I mean, uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, you know, it touches his mouth. That's also a DNA thing. <laughs> but he was just so sandstone with the, the DNA strand, but I was just like, all right. So he's, he's gonna grab the cigarette, but because he overheard this, right? And despite him taking the cigarette sample and he's just like, well, now that I've got this stuff, you know, I'm, uh, I'm pretty much complete with my mission, you know, I guess I'll go home now, I guess. <laughs> but with him overhearing that and him saying, you know, that's not recognition, Kana, it's just the way the world works. And so he, he takes it, you know, I've collected what I need, so my goal is already completed, but as he says, now that, uh, now that he's done, you know, he might as well go out with a fucking bang. So, it's kind of, <laughs> he says that, and like, you can see his, his eyes, the star in his eyes is, is, is black again. And it's just like, man is really out here going to fucking act his fucking, <laughs> act his fucking heart out, out of spite. <laughs> Which is just fantastic, dude. Fantastic. So the last thing that I wanted to talk about is the TV drama based on a shoujo manga, which I find very fun that Aqua reads the manga. He, he has it in his room and everything. <laughs> very fun. But the fact that this TV drama is just a promotional piece for the models and not the, the manga itself is very... I just just absolutely I I insulting to both, you know, the audience of the manga, you know, the manga fans and the mangaka themselves. But I, I, I can kind of I, I can kind of see and understand why this is the way that it is. You know, not that to say that I love it or anything. It sucks. But man, it really grinds my gear considering that the amount of fucking adaptations that I that I've witnessed this year alone, just in this year, it's kind of fucking wild and how some things are just god awful. <laughs> Not to say that I'm having like I'm experiencing one this season as well, but yeah, though that really fucking grinds my fucking gear, and I really enjoy that it has eleven reviews and one star. <laughs> And of course they said like they packed 14 volumes into six episodes. I'm just like, well, fuck. I think that's your problem right there. But again, it's just a promotional piece for the models. So like the whole acting stuff doesn't really matter. However, the TV crew and all that and the directing is on point. So it's not like, it, it's not unwatchable. It's just insulting. <laughs> and the fact that you know, in the first episode, the, the production of the first episode, uh, the mangaka came came to check it out and like her expressions was just of extreme disappointment. And I was like, damn, <laughs> that fucking sucks, dude. And of course, we've got this pretty boy over here. His name is uh, Melt Narushima. I, gu I guess it's just how the world in, in this series is. They just have weird fucking names. Like... <laughs> At some point, I'm just like, is that your actual name? Like Aqua? Like Aquamarine? Or or is this your stage name? <laughs> I don't know, but this fucking Melt Boy is really out here with his fucking tinny little voice, his tinny nasally 
almost like nerdy voice that just just that just does not match him at all. It's very stupid and ridiculous. <laughs> and of course, he's got he he's basically what Kana was uh, when she was younger, right? And how like he doesn't really give the respect to other to the other actors, and he's out here fucking complaining to Kana about like oh. This whole rain stuff is making my hair all frizzy and stuff. You know, I mean, after this, after this, fo uh, uh, what is it? After this recording, I got a magazine photo shoot to go to. Uh <laughs> I hope Aqua comes in all gas and no brakes and just scare the fuck out of this boy during the acting in the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, in terms of him and what Kana says, you know, and how like you have to throw away your ego in order to act or uh, that's, that's sort of what she was saying to, to Aqua, right? But it also applies to Mel as well because Mel is, he doesn't have an acting skill. He's just a model. So he's just really out here trying to look good for the camera. And so he still has his ego on him. He still has this pride that, that, that he's fucking keeping. And I, I, I believe that's like one of the biggest things for, for actors and also voice actors as well is to be able to throw away your ego and get fully into your role and not think about how you're going to look bad or stupid or, or whatever on camera, you know, as long as you're actually be able to play uh, the, the character. Anyway, so be exciting to see what Aqua's got in store for, for this boy. <laughs> That'll be fun. <sighs> But that's pretty much it. I wrote all these notes and I'm literally getting lost in my own notes. <laughs> I'm just over here scrolling up and down. I'm just like, where am I? <laughs> oh man, BT Dubs. If you uh, are ever interested in the notes that I write, I post it on Patreon to which who's even here at this point? Uh, who's even here at the end of the fucking video? All right, other than Perhaps the people on Patreon. So at this point, who who am I advertising to? <laughs> but you know what? If uh, if you're here and you're, you're still listening, and uh, if you're watching this on one time speed, you know I've I've said this before. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> watching this on one time speed? Are you crazy? <laughs> These discussions are made for 1.5 speed, guys. You gotta get this done. You've got shit to do. All right. <laughs> But I appreciate you if you're here, and uh, yeah, I always, uh, I always try to not really do things to- Oh, sounds like something has crashed on the other side of the room again, but okay. If I have anything else to say, I will write it in the description down below. Thank you guys for sticking around, and I will see you guys in the next episode.